there. Hey, everybody, God bless you. You know what? It's, it's all about getting down to the gospel and letting people know, man, it's time to stop being so doggone religious and judgmental and stop recognizing that the gospel is our salvation and the fact it has set us free from the curse of the law. Even though there's people don't want to put about to put you down by the law. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, I call religious people or legalistic people to like to put you in a box and condemn you and say you're going to hell. But you know what? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And this message that we're going to talk about today and from this point forward, I'm starting to talk about the fact is a tree is known by his own fruit. You are known by your own fruit. And guess what? Your fruit can be good fruit or corrupt fruit. You choose. But if you let Christ come into your life, if you let the Holy Spirit make manifested in you, then you can bear the fruits of the Spirit. What fruits of the Spirit are we talking about? We're talking about the Holy Spirit. And it's found in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Now the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. That's the characteristics and the nature that most of us want to live by in the first place. We want to live with characteristics that gets along with other people. Now, there's something you don't want to get along with other people, and that's, that's your choice. But most people won't get along with you unless you bear the right fruit. And Christ gave us, us, those of us who have received Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, Yahshua as our personal Lord and Savior, is found in Romans 10, 9 and 10. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, Yahshua, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And with the heart spiritual heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth of confession is made unto salvation. And if you're going to confess that Christ is Lord, then you go by his commandment. In John 13, 34, he said, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Verse 35 said, and men would know that you are my disciples by the love that you show one another. And the bottom line in Matthew 12, 33, it said either make the tree good and its fruits good or make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For a tree is known by its fruit. <laughs> so we want to talk and start our series. And I think the whole thing is about checking our fruit daily. Is to start recognizing that we now can bear good fruit if we let the Holy Spirit be manifest in us. All right, so listen to this, stu this study. We'll go into some more next time. But the bottom line is Christ has made us free. Amen? All right, I'll check you later. And remember, Yeshua is Lord. That's the Hebrew name for Jesus. That's the Hebrew name meaning salvation. Amen. All right. God bless you. And go ahead and join us in the, the message. <laughs>Hey, did you like my icon? I like that. I did a new one. Got to look at this explosion and it comes up and it says, you know, worlds will come with Christian ministry. I think it's cool, you know, uh, but we'll keep on perfecting because that's what it's all about, right? Perfecting your message, your package of your message. But the main thing is the content of your message is what it's all about. And I'm trying to say, check this message out for, for me today. Uh, and I believe God is leading us in the right direction moving forward is the fact is that Christ has set, Christ has made us free. We are free. 
we, we can, we're free to live our life with the liberty and with the mercy of God. We're free to sit there and, and start tackling the, talk, the, the strongholds that comes into our life. All of us have strongholds. You know, the Bible says all of us stand and come short of the glory of God. So, you know, when people sit there, well, you know, well, you, 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 you can't keep sinning. And you're like, well, I don't understand what you mean by that. And I know that's a friend of mine that said that. But I don't understand what you mean by that. If you can't keep sinning, and Christ is the one that helps you get out of sin, why would you stop with dealing with Christ? Now, it's true you can stop dealing with ministries and, and certain people in the gospel, that's that what you want to do, but please never stop dealing with Christ. Always walk with him and read the Bible pray and come in fellowship with him, fellowship with other believers as well. And, and you know, good thing about most a believer that all of us should be is that most believers should be encouraging one another, not putting one another down, making somebody feel bad because they still have weaknesses. And I'm going to tell you something, I don't know about most of you, but most people have weaknesses that they're working on. They, and, and you know, I think the blessing I like about it is you keep growing and maturing in, in, in your faith is that you, you, you're not as weak as you used to be. And you should take that as a victory. You're not doing some of the things you used to do. You should take that as a victory. But yeah, you still got some things that are going on in the back of the booth in the corner of your mind. We all do. I mean, so I can say that they don't, but I guarantee you, we all have some type of uh, battle in the mind. And then some of us, uh, fortunately, the, we're allowing the battle to be manifested in our life. And then we start being defeated and being led and become more cognitive minded. And cognitive meaning that you're fleshly minded and you, and you move and you direct and you take action based on your flesh opposed to being led by the spirit. But the bottom line is the mind, you know, one of the messages I heard before is the mind is a real of faith. That's where the battle, you win or lose it in your mind. Everything else is based on the fact of who won, you know? So it's, it, I think that's a daily walk and a daily tackle. That's why I would never want to run somebody away because they're in sin, because in most cases, all of us is some area of sin, you know, some some level, some degree, either thoughts or in deeds. And and I think the fact is though is that we keep getting better if we stay in the word and fellowship with one another. That's how you can grow. And then for those who've been and stay in body Christ, let's not be so doggone judgmental. The Bible said, judge not and you shall not be judged. So therefore, we need to stop judging one another and start edifying one another, building one another up. And no, you, we're not asking you, so you think this way, <laughs> to endorse or condone a behavior. What you should do if you're going to rebuke, rebuke in love, criticize in love, discuss the matter in love, but not in the, the con, not in the way that you get showing the wrath of God and you, you're not being called to do or go by the wrath of God. So I think that's the key to it. We let us, you know, your salvation, my salvation is based on the grace and mercy of God. I think we all can agree with that, right? It's based on the mercy and grace of God. So if you receive mercy and grace, Give it to one another so that you don't sit there and be putting one another down. You're supposed to sit there and try to give them mercy and grace, not saying everything, not saying what the person is doing is okay, but still give them mercy and grace and pray for them. You know, a lot of us like talk about the fact that my, you know, that song, my mama say, prayed for me. She had me on my mind. And I'm so glad she did. You know, I mean, that's the song, right? <laughs> and but the bottom line is, 
we do, many of us give credit for our changing toward the gospel by the understanding that someone is praying for us. And the greatest intercessor is Christ himself, making daily intercession for us. And you know, we need intercession because uh, in the most case, we're jacked up. <laughs> but it's with with but that's why we need mercy and grace. And the fact is you can't fix it on your own. And the people who try, and here's the thing I'm trying to tell about some people, you're trying to shame people to fix something that they can't fix. Think about it. So that that's my little spiel for that. I think it's important. But uh, let's go into the message uh today. Uh <laughs> I think you'll like it. I, I like it, and I think I want to try to. Uh, continue to build on those type of things, man. But let's let's let's, let's check this out. Christ has made us free, you know. And uh, I start off with the scripture here. Uh, <laughs> it says, "Check the scripture out." First of all, when we come to Christ, it says in Romans twelve one, it says, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren." by the mercy of God that you present your bodies a what? Living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, not man. That's when we get in trouble. We want to be acceptable to man. Stop trying to be acceptable to men or women or people or ministry or political party or your friends or your peers. Try to be holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Being acceptable unto God, not people again. Please remember that. And be not conformed to this world, huh? That's when you try to be acceptable to man, when you could be, you try when you're conforming to this world. But the Bible said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And, and, and I, you know, just remember that as I pray, I'll bring it back up in a minute. The perfect will of God, being acceptable of, unto God. That's, I think, listen, all ministries, all saints, all believers have and encourage somebody to be acceptable unto God, not you. That's where you get all sucked up. You know, you suck up on a living thing. Because the person is not being, is not acceptable to you. But you got to remember, he is acceptable or she is acceptable to God because that's why he sent Christ so that we can receive him, our salvation. You know, that's the glorious gospel. And the fact is, it is a renewing of the mind. Help a person renew their mind. Too many of us trying to play that shaming person to shame. Oh, I don't get it. You know, it hasn't worked. It never worked. All the person do is run people away from the church, run people away from the gospel. And you're supposed to feel good about that? You know, the Bible says, heaven rejoices when one son repents. If we're going to shame them and run them away, Heaven doesn't get to rejoice. God doesn't get glorified. The body doesn't get edified. And we got somebody now who needs to be saved. Who Christ died for that person too. And rose again. And called you to go preach the gospel. Remember that. That's why I always think about faith and, 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 and how I believe the, we should present ourselves. Because if you try to present yourself perfect, you will find out you're not perfect. You know, but you are acceptable to God by doing the best that you can. You know, look at this right here. I like this. Christ has set us free. Christ has. And I think that's important for us. That's why uh, don't let people run you away because look at this. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. See, some of us don't want to give liberty, but the Bible says in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And many times we try to be legalistic, try to bring in the laws, try to tell people the do's, to, I mean, the don'ts and all that other stuff. We try to bring them back into bondage and back into the law again. The law was the schoolmaster, but the law, we've been free from the law. 
Stop trying to bring people in bondage. That's my position. That's what the Bible says right there too. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again that every man is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. That means back in bondage, back in debt. See, Christ is our redeemer. But you go back and become a debtor when you try to do the whole law. And we know that you can't do the whole law. And most of us don't understand the biggest law that we break is who do we put before God? When we do that, we violate the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other God before me. If you are trying to please people, then you're worshiping people instead of God. The Bible said, please God. Well, in Hebrews 11, 6, without faith it's impossible to please him. But he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is rewarded those who diligently seek him. But without faith it's impossible to please him. It's not about pleasing people. I'm pleasing you. It's about pleasing him. He said, if I testify in verse 3, if I testify again that every man is circumcised, that he is a debtor to the whole law. Christ has become of no effect. Wow, look at that. When you put people in the law, <laughs> when you go by the law, you basically say Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are falling from grace. And I, and, and, and look, <laughs> let me go to the for a second. I need grace. You need grace. Whether you like it or not, you need grace. Going back into the law and then being legal minded. And you know that if you ever notice that legalistic people are very mean, I, you, we, everyone needs grace. And that's how we should live, not by the law. But you go ahead and live by the law with your bad self, because you're not in grace. You can't be in grace because you're by the law. You got to square it away. You know, how to, you know how to address every aspect of the law. You can meet every criteria of the law. Not just some, but you can't go by some. You can't go by the whole law. You know, the Bible says if you mess up in one area of the law, you, 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 met, you, you, you basically completed or failed all the laws. What do you think about that? That's not how you think sometimes, right? You think that you can you master one area and somebody else is weak in an area that you, you got it going on. No, you don't. Because if you're going by the law, you have failed. And all of saying it comes short of the glory of God. That's what the Bible says. So you want to go ahead and live by the law, you go ahead with your bad self. But I'm going to tell you something, I need grace. And I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that statement of saying, you go by the law, you fall from grace. So I said, do not go by the law. He says right here, for we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. The Bible said that the just shall live by faith. You know? Uh, let me see. Did I go to the next one? Let me see. Okay, got that. Yeah, six. He said, for in Christ, for in Jesus Christ, the circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith, which worketh by love. Huh? Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion comes not of him that calls you. A little leaven leaven the whole love. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubles you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And like I said, most people, they, they, you know, people read these scriptures and they still go back to no, man, you got to go by the law. And that's how, that's how people don't want to come to church because you sitting there trying to go by the law and they can't go, you can't go, you can't make it, they can't make it. You go by faith. The Bible said the just shall live by faith, not by the law. You know, verse 11 said, And I, brethren, 
if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross cease? I would that you were even cut off, which troubles you. I would they were even cut off, which troubles you. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. And that's why young people that, that, that listen to this, you've been called unto liberty. You have the flexibility. You have the grace. Don't let somebody sit there and put you back in bondage with their judgmental selves. You tell me you go about your business, man. I ain't following you. I'm following Christ. He said, verse 13, say, only use not liberty for the occasion to the flesh. And that when the guys said, see, I told you, I'm going to don't don't live don't give your liberty for the occasion of flesh. Give your liberty so to come out of being cognizant. We work toward those things. I know some of us are no no no. Get a break. Get a life. You need time to grow. We all need time to grow, and we ain't got time to sit there and be judgmental of one another. We need to encourage one another instead of saying I got you. He said, but by love serve one another. I told somebody the other day, let me call off for a second. I told somebody the other day, you know, when you love somebody, you don't steal from them. When you love somebody, you don't hurt them. When you love somebody, you don't, you don't try to get over on them, right? When you love your children, you try to provide for your children. You don't try to steal from your children. You know, I mean, don't get wrong, the people who do, we know that, but that means they don't love them. But the bottom line, he's talking about father loving one another. We, if you love one another, you don't want to be taking somebody else's property. You don't want to take somebody's relationship. You don't want to take somebody's car, home, money. You know what I mean? If you love them. In a lot of cases, you most of do and can keep from doing things negative toward people. We can learn to love one another. And, and as we grow and grow with the grace and the mercy and the operating by love, we do change, but everybody change on their own time. That's where the liberty comes from. You know, we want to sit there and tell people the word. We want to, you know, all those type of things that you don't need to do. You need to fact is and believe in and trust in the power of the Holy Spirit, not your power, not your might. You don't have it. It's all I'm trying to say. You don't have it. Let me see. I got my microphone on. Let me put my microphone closer. <laughs> all right. But you don't have it. You don't have the power. You don't have the anointing to make somebody else change. That anointing is for you. Because you need that anointing. Amen? So just remember that. Uh, the liberty is what we need. That's That grace is what you need. And to operate by love. Verse 14. For all the law fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. One of my friends is going to say, oh, you're talking about it's okay, we love one another. But that's not what we're saying. See, love one another, just like you love your child, and if they said they're getting ready to do something dangerous, you stop them. Or if they start doing or acting in bad behavior, then, you know, you do whatever you need to do. You have to spank your child. The middle Bible says, spoil the rod, spell the child. But because it's a child, a lot of kids, I think some of you take that whole concept and bring it into Put a rod against a, a grown person, that's too late then. You don't, you don't raise a child. You don't treat a grown person like a child. You treat you treat them in love. He said like this, but if you bite, look at this. And don't you see that's what's happening with some people, some ministries, some people do. Yeah, he said, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed of one another. And that's what happened when you sit there being so doggone judgmental. Okay. You know, I'm a, you know, some of them may go over again, but just to uh, milk them, right? The milk the scriptures and talk more in the bottom. But you know, this skews the time that we're doing today. But just remember uh, to go over those scriptures because faith comes by hearing and hearing, right? So we'll go over these scriptures again. I like old Fred Price that then say, uh, uh, somebody told him, so why do you keep going over the same thing? He said, when you start doing what I say, then I go to something new. <laughs> Maybe we need to think about that too. That's why I said, have you checked your fruit today? Look at this in verse 16. 
This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Listen to that. That's the battle we have in our mind, the cardinal mind and the spiritual mind. But if you be led to the spirit, you're not under the law. See, the Holy Spirit is not going to tell you to slap your wife in the refrigerator or steal from somebody or kill somebody or, or put them back in bondage by the law. Verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh, just, just in case when I said the Holy Spirit, the, the, the fruits of the spirit, look at the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry. That's what, you know, when you sit there and put something else above God, witchcraft, hatred. That's the one that really gets me about the people who, um, from the Spanish Inquisition and all those other areas, where, where did they get that hate? What, why teach your child to hate? It, it, it befuddles me. So why, you always you teaching a child to go to hell. Why are you saying, no, I ain't teaching a child to go to hell. That's how I'm teaching teach certain people. You're teaching a child to go to hell because all of us are made in the image of God. That's what the scripture says. You can't change the scriptures. Nobody y'all can change the scriptures, right? Hatred, variance, immolation, look at that, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, you know, all these type of things, and look at the other one right here, it's an envy. Yeah, come on, Saint. we see a lot of people full of envy, murder. We don't, look, in less than a month, we had like, what, three or four, I guess three mass shootings. We had that one on the Buffalo, we had the one in Texas, and we got Tucson, yeah. Three, three mass shootings in less than a month. Wow. Drunkenness, reveling, and such like I tell you before, as I also told you in time past, that they would do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And I kind of wonder, and I ask that question sometimes, I bring these up is when we teach our children from generation to generation to hate, I mean, that young man that went into Buffalo, he was taught to hate. And he, he has been so condensed, so convinced that he even pled not guilty for killing 10 people. Say he's not guilty. Think about that. What kind of mindset did you would teach your children to, to be able to, to hate people that they don't even know? Because that's what, that's what, that's what we want to stop racism. And I'm talking about those who listen and please listen, those who listen. And you want to stop racism? Stop trying to stop demonizing people for the mere color of their skin. Stop doing that. Because they, you, a tree is known by his own fruit, his fruit, not his color of skin, not it's not, it's, it's by his fruit. And you know that everybody don't operate the same way. You know that, but you still teach people to hate somebody just for the mere color of their skin, for the mere faith that they may have. You teach that and you perpetuate it generation to generation. And all you're doing is making it worse for your own, your own people. Because you become so judgmental, you become so hateful, you send people, you teach your child to go to hell. The Bible said it. John, in John, uh, 1 John chapter 3, it says, he who hates his brother is a murderer, and no murderer has eternal life of bodies in him. So why would you teach your child to have eternal death? I, it, 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 study the Bible for yourself. Read it for yourself. You can demonize people all day long, but you really don't have the authority. None of you, none of us, not one breathing individual walking this earth, not one group walking this earth, because God laws over, overrides everybody. So sit there and try to keep, keep, continue to perpetuate hate. All you're doing is, is just sending your own children to hell. And then those of you that's legalistic and being judgmental, all you're doing is 
judge, you shall not be judged. But if you do judge, you shall be judged. For what measure you met, it shall be measured unto you. So back off on judging people because you need the grace and they need the grace. Why don't we give each other grace instead of sitting there and putting each other down? Come on, saints. Let's get this right. Let's sit there and understand these scriptures. Those that we just did the works of the flesh. And the fact is that that's what scripture said again. It says, uh, verse, uh, and that's just 21. And do those, he said, he said, I tell you before, well, I read all the envy and murder, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they would do such things should not have heard the kingdom of God. So if you teach your child, you basically teach your child not to inherit the kingdom of God. If you teach them hate, if you teach them have envy and murder, and drunkenness, and whatever, you're teaching them that. You're simply teaching them not to inherit the kingdom of God. I like this fact, and this is where we end up with this, the last scriptures here, verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections of the lust. He says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory provoking one another, envying one another. That's the, that's, that's, that's the last script, that's the last slide. The, the point I wanted to bring out is fact is that vain glory, the vain glory being recognized by man, that's vain glory because it's fading glory. And the same people that did, just like they did Christ, they will do to you. You can be up on one day and you can be down on the other. You can be, you can be, uh, push to the side. So don't try to please man, please God. Stay consistent with trying to grow from grace and mercy. Give mercy. Don't be judging one another. That's what I'm doing. So Christ has set us free. You have been free from the bondages of sin if you're in Christ Jesus. So we, we need to move away from all this Oh, God, I don't know how many people who would have died in this in hate and vain glory. You know, when you try to talk about black superiority or white superiority or you know, particular uh, faith superiority, vain glory, vain glory, because I know you're not talking to God when you do that. When you sit there and you, you, you're a racism, whether you're black or white, and you, you sit there and you do that, you're not talking to God. You're not talking to God. You're not reading the word, but you got the Bible in your hand for read it. Pray to him, not man. When you sit there, when you gotta condemn somebody, you know you're not dealing, you're not, you know you're not part of God. You're caught in mind at them. Let's learn to be spiritually minded. We're free, man. This whole point, we're free. And that's why I like it. That's why I like it. That's why I like it. I'm telling you. So we will continue to try to work on this theory. And every all the, just, everything is spent off still about the fact is, have you checked your fruit today? Check it. And I guarantee you, when you check it and line up with the Holy Spirit, there's your peace. Huh? <laughs> Knowing that you can do all things in Christ. And that's what it's all about. So I thank you for this opportunity to uh, take on one of my videos and we're gonna keep spreading the gospel, amen, amen. And I hope you like my little uh, action animation video. I thought it was nice. I'll see if I can make some more, <laughs> at least for me, amen. God bless you and I'll check you next time. See you later, bye-bye. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.